Welcome to Steve Draws. I'm Steve from the group The Dutch Artist. And in this video, I'm going to do a review about a book which is called They Drew As They Please The Hidden Art of Disney's Golden Age, the 1930s. It's a book in a series of books, and this is the first part of the series. It's written by DJ Gas. And I'm going to do reviews of all of the books, but this is the first book, and I'll leave links to all the other reviews I'm going to do. The series is written by DJ Gaz, who has written several books about Disney art. Each book of the series has a foreword by a Disney artist. In this volume, Pete Docter wrote the foreword. This book was published in 2015 by Chronicle Books, and it has 208 pages. It is a hardcover with a dust cover. This series of books shows art that has never been seen before. DJ Gas visited families of the Disney artists that worked at the story department and discovered art that has not been seen for 70 years. Also a lot of correspondences and letters that shine a new light on how and for what project the art was created. That makes this collection of books unique. I love this book the most out of the series because I love the early work of Disney animation. All the books in this series are set up in the same manner. An introduction by a contemporary Disney or Pixar artist, short biographies about the featured artist and a lot of samples of art. The Drew As They Please The Hidden Art of Disney's Golden Age, the 1930s, shows art that was made in the 30s. Walt Disney attracted fine artists to work at the Disney Studios. Albert Herder was the first concept artist at the studio. He was born in Zurich, Germany in 1883 and moved to the United States in 1914. That year he started working at the Barre Bowers studio in New York. In 1925 he moved to California and worked as a freelance artist for several Hollywood producers. In 1931 he started working at the Disney Studios. He was hired by Ted Sears he knew from Barre Bauer Studio. He was first hired as an animator and started working on animations for the Silly Symphonies. After animating eight shorts, he was hired as a storyboard artist at Disney's story department. Each time a new subject was planned, Herder was consulted and given free reign to let his imagination wander and design strange animals, plants, scenery or costumes. He started to draw as he pleased. He would draw gags and ideas for the Silly Symphonies, but also Mickey Mouse shorts. Here are some drawings for the short Babe in the Woods from 1932. Just look at the witch. It looks a lot like the witch from Snow White. When the studio started working on Snow White, Herder was supervising artists for the interior and exterior of the dwarf's cottage. For Pinocchio he designed a lot of clocks in Geppetto's workshop. He also worked on art for Fantasia and Dumbo. In 1942 he died at the age of 59. Seven years later Simon & Schuster published a collection of his drawings with the title He Drew As He Pleased. The author of the book, DJ Gass, got inspiration from this title and named his book series They Drew As They Pleased. I searched on the internet for the original book from 1948 and you can still buy it second hand. Someone also made scans of the book and made a PDF you can download for free. I will leave a link below this video. What I love about this book series is that you can discover art by Disney artists you have never heard of, or have not been featured much in other books. A big surprise and discovery is the art of Ferdinand Horvath. He was born in Budapest, Hungary in 1891. He joined the army in 1917 and fought against the Russians in World War I. He was captured by the Russians. After two years he escaped the prison. He also wrote a novel about it called Captured. 
1921 he arrived in New York and started working at Paul Terry's Fable Studios. He produced 200 animation drawings a day. In 1932 Ferdinand wrote a letter to Walt Disney and a year later he started working at the studios. He had a trial period of six months. First he worked on promotional art for posters. But he also worked on backgrounds for the shorts, the Cookie Carnival and the band concert. The trial only lasted six months. Horvath wanted to work at the story department and wanted a higher salary. Disney could not offer him a higher salary, so he started working at the Warner Brothers animation department. Warner Brothers released a film about a German soldier that was captured. The film was called Captured and was a ripoff from his book. He sued Warner Brothers to no avail and he was out of a job. So he wrote to Walt Disney again for a job. Disney hired him and Horthev started working in the story department. He worked on ideas and gags for Silly Symphony shorts and also on Snow White. He worked on and off at Disney. He had some falling outs with Disney and was fired several times. In 1937 he was fired for good. But the art he made at Disney is just astounding. A very unique and quirky style. Other than Albert Herder, Orthath would make very detailed illustrations in the hope his ideas would end up on the screen. Gustav Tangren was born in Sweden in 1896. He became a renowned illustrator of Swedish folklore stories. In 1920 he moved to New York and worked as an illustrator for children's books and advertising. He soon made covers for magazines like Live Magazine, Cosmopolitan and the Saturday Evening Post. In 1936 he was hired by Walt Disney to work on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. He designed a poster for Snow White. He also worked on silly symphonies like Moth and Flames, Little Hiawatha and The Old Mill. Here are some concepts he made for The Old Mill. This movie was used to test a lot of techniques for Snow White. For Pinocchio he became the main designer. He made elaborate drawings of the town and could incorporate his European heritage. He also worked on concepts for Fantasia's Sorcerer's Apprentice. For Bambi he made beautiful and detailed art, but Disney decided to use the art of Tyrus Wong instead. Tengren was very upset and left the studio. Bianca Marjoli was the first woman to start working at the story department. She was born in Rome, Italy in 1900 as Bianca Maggioli. The family moved to Chicago and a French teacher changed her name to Blanche Maggioli at McKinley High School, the same school Walt Disney attended. And in 1934 she wrote a letter to Walt Disney. In 1935 she was hired to work at the story department. Walt Disney changed her name to Bianca. She closely worked together with Gustav Tengren and Ferdinand Horvath on concepts for a short called Belle de Fleur, but the short was never made. She also made these wonderful concept drawings for a silly symphony called Japanese Symphony, but the short was also shelved. Marjorie also made concept drawings for the Sugar Plum Fairy sequence for Fantasia and some early designs of Tinkerbell for Peter Pan and some early concepts for Cinderella. In 1930 she left the studios and continued to work on her own art. This book is still available on Amazon. I'll leave links below this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like it please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to hit that notification bell because each time I upload a new video you get a notification. If you want to see all of the other books in the series, uh, I did reviews of all of the books, 
I'll leave links below this video. Drawing is fun and practice makes perfect. See you next time. Doodles!